In this video, we are going to be making a leather wallet using the Carbrite drag knife. The pattern for this project came from Make Supply, was downloaded and imported as an SVG, then laid out to fit the scrap piece of leather that I was going to use for this project. You, of course, can use lay this out to fit whatever material you wish. Now, to uh, apply a drag knife, I'm just going to hit Control All to highlight everything, then go to Select Bit, select the drag knife, click on Drag Knife, and we have the same controls that you would have for any other bit. The difference with a drag knife, though, is that the depth controls the amount of force. So what that means is that whatever the thickness of the material is, we are always going to be setting a depth deeper than that thickness. How much deeper depends upon the material that we're cutting. To determine in this project how deep to set it, I set up a number of test cuts. This material leather is 40 to 50 thousandths thick. And from my testing, I found that uh, 70 thousandths cut nicely. I went ahead and set this project up to cut it 80 thousandths deep, just to be sure that if there was any variation in the level of my uh, jig that I was setting up or variation, more variation in the leather, that I was going to go ahead and cut all the way through it. The other thing that I observed when doing this project was that leather cuts better when you do it in multi-passes. So I set this up to do two passes. You just get a cleaner cut. Okay. Now, another thing in that I uh, test cut that I did notice was that the holes in this project were a little small. They made it difficult to stitch. So we're going to go ahead and use one of those other tools that we have available to us. I just went ahead and unhighlighted all of the outlines. So I've just got the holes and I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and inset that. So I'm going to set this to be a negative, sorry, negative <laughs> 10 thousandths offset. It's going to make that hole just a little bit bigger. Now, why negative? Well, it's because I knew that that would push it to the outside. But if you're not sure whether to go negative or positive, just zoom in and you can see which side of the circle, or in this case, the spline, it's moving that. So that's all that it takes to set up a uh, drag knife project. We go ahead and set then compile this in this case. And in most cases, uh, something like this, I use manual placement, mainly because I'm going to be sticking material down. I'm not wanting to have to worry about making sure that I got it in exactly the location that I want. I can just move the truck to where I want it to start and eliminate all of that frustration. So you see this is going to take about 17 minutes to carve. That's all there is to it. Let's go make a wallet. We're going to make a jig here for use with a drag knife. Now in this case I've just got a piece of scrap. I've cut the size here and this actually has a Formica top on this. So I'm going to be using a off-the-shelf tacky strip. You can get these in a variety of different tacks. They're readily available on Amazon and relatively cheap. <coughs> yeah. But uh, you don't have to use the tacky. Uh, we want to use the self-healing mat because it helps to keep the bit from being damaged as it cuts past it. But you can use a product called Tack It Over and Over Again. And in fact, I'm going to use that on this surface to hold this down so that I can swap these out whenever I want. But first, we've got to get our uh, belting on this jig. So, as always, Get our double-sided tape down. And press that along. You want this always right up against the edge. Occasionally I see people set this back. That will not work. Now I've cut this so that this has plenty of overlap on both sides. 
and that's so that I can go ahead and staple this. This is going to be a permanent jig, so I'm attaching this so that it's not going to get pulled off the end. We'll just go ahead and staple that right on down. Okay. All right. Use the uh, tack it over and over again. Uh, we have seen that if you get this too thin, it doesn't seem to work. So just gonna put it layer this down, and then just use the brush just to spread it out. All right. That's good and tacky. So we'll go ahead and slap our our piece down here. stick that down. Take the protective back off. I keep this because I've been using different surfaces. They have different tacks. So keep that so you can stick it back on if you pull this off and put a different one on. Now we're going to be cutting some leather, but if we were to stick this down to our sticky pad here, the leather would literally pull off and you end up ruining this. So what I've been doing is just taking just cheap shelf paper. And I use this stuff for a lot of things. And I'm literally just going ahead and sticking that down. Right. Go ahead and peel that off. Now we've got just a cheap sacrificial gluing surface. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down. I'm using manual jigging, so I just want to keep it relatively straight. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, define my corner. Now we can mark it, but it's pretty easy for me to see where I'm going to be defining that corner here. Sure that everything is down good and flat. <clears throat> now, additionally, we're going to take just some scraps of leather here and we're just going to take and stick these on towards the end here. And it doesn't really matter what we're doing here. What we're doing is making sure that when that roller comes up, it doesn't get stuck onto the sticky or that it catches this edge and lifts up that leather. So we're just going to get something so that the rollers will keep rolling. We want the rollers to actually help clamp the material down and keep it good and flat. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select our project here. Uh, we'll do its project check. And then add just, just a load to 85. It'll home, and then go ahead, do a backlash, turn the light on, and then we're just going to move to our start position as defined in the project. We're looking at this, I want to be sure that I'm within range on this, and approximately in range on that back side there. Um, <laughs> and that should be margin. Should be good there. So we just hit enter. Now this, of course, is a drag knife project, so we're going to be using this drag knife. This fits in the half inch uh, shank, and we're going to be using the uh, 60 degree bit here since this is pretty deep. Just take the bit, drop that in. There's a magnet in the bottom that snaps that in. Many of you have used vinyl cutters, this is the same type of cutter that you've used before. Going to mount that in. This does use the electrical connection so that we don't damage that tip. It's just going to come down and touch on that. And I'm going to go ahead and jog to position. It's going to move us up a little bit so we're kind of in the middle of the range where we're going to be going. 
move this over on there. Now this does do the extended range, so it moves slowly into place. So if you wanted it sticking out further, it's not going to be a problem. It'll always find it. Play it out. Cover down, hit enter, and it'll proceed to go ahead and turn it out. All right, we've got our pieces cut out here. Um, the uh, stiffer pieces, the holes just kind of fall out. Um, so you just kind of flex them and push those on out, and you'll see they come out. From there. The softer portions of the leather, um, they didn't seem to cut entirely, so in some cases they're kind of snagged. Just make sure to push through with an awl. 